everybody. We come to clap our hands. We come to do our dance. We come to give God praise. Have you come to give the Lord praise this morning? Won't you join me? Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Welcome to our morning worship and join us for praise and worship. The song says, Water you turned into wine. You opened at the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Come on, join us. Come on, come on. Get excited today. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no Like Jehovah, there's no God 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 like Jehovah. Let's 
today and we bless your name thank you God that this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it 
thank you, O oh God, for an opportunity to serve you and to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you so very much for allowing us to be in your presence, for allowing us to feel your presence, for allowing us to sing of your goodness and your greatness one more time. <laughs> Lord, you didn't have to do it, but we sure are glad that you did. You didn't have to save us, O oh God, but we sure are glad that you did. Thank you, God for being with us today. And we pray in the mighty name of Jesus for an awesome move of the Holy Spirit in this house. We pray, oh God, that you have your will and you have your way, that you, oh God, will be glorified in the midst, that you, oh God, will use our praise team and our musicians, that you, oh God, will use our ushers, that you, oh God, will use us even as we sit in the pews and even as those who watch by way of the internet. And Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you would use Dr. Jasper Williams like never before. Anointed with fresh oil, O oh God, from the crown of his head to the very soles of his feet. O oh God, we thank you for the word that you have given him. Thank you, God, that you will open our hearts to receive it. We thank you, God, for what you'll do in this house on this day. After all, we've heard from ABC and NBC, but on this Sunday morning, we need a word from thee. And God, we say thank you in advance for that word that'll change hearts and minds. A word of salvation, a word of hope, a word of healing, a word of transformation in this place on today. And God, we would be remiss if we didn't join in with the praise team on today and say how great is our God. <laughs> how great is our God. Thank you, God, that you are great. Thank you that you are good. Thank you that you are better than good. Thank you that you are magnificent. Thank you that you are majestic. Thank you that you are awesome. Thank you that you are all that. Thank you that you are our God and beside you there is none other. Thank you, God, that we're not going to wait for the preacher to preach, but we're going to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory that you are due. For you still sit on the throne. You still reign supreme. And you still have all power in your hands. And that's why we can say, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. Melt us, oh God. Mold us, oh God. Fill us, oh God. And by all means, please use us, oh God. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You know this. Sing with us. It's already getting better it's already getting easier god's already moving on my behalf it's already it's already getting better it's already getting easier god's already moving on my behalf gonna sing it again it's all it's already getting better. It's already getting easier. God's already moving on my behalf. It's already getting already getting better. It's already getting easier. God's already moving on my behalf. Oh, ready? 
tell God thank you that he did it for me somebody ought to just tell God thank you that he did it for you my grandmother used to tell me that sometimes you got to make it personal sometimes you got to talk to yourself but he did it for me in Jesus name we give him all thanks glory honor and praise this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall do what rejoice and be glad in it for those of us that have our Bibles in whatever form we raise them now as evidence that we stand on the word of God because we know that it contains all things necessary for salvation, for strength, and for miracles. Somebody ought to tell God thank you for that. Uh, this morning we are so glad to worship and be in the house of God, whether we are here worshiping virtually, we can tell you good morning, whether you're watching on whatever platform it is or you're here in the sanctuary, we are just so glad to see you, whether we see your name scrolling or we see your smiling face behind the mask. Today I just want to alert you to just a few of our announcements, we will continue pastor's Bible study every Tuesday at 12 noon and 8 p.m. We encourage you to log on and join us. We will also have youth Bible study Tuesdays at 7 p.m. We're excited. We are excited about how it is we can serve the community with our vaccination clinic. And so every Thursday we continue to provide vaccines no matter what dose you need, first, second, third, or fourth. We have it all right here at St. Philip and we're grateful that on this past Thursday, we were able to vaccinate 124 people. Somebody ought to tell God thank you for how he is using St. Philip. Uh, if you would like to make an appointment, call the church office. If you need a ride, call the church office, and we will do all we can to accommodate you. Um, COVID testing continues every day, Monday through Friday, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Just drive up, and you'll get your results same day. Um, on this day, we uh, pause, uh, we normally, excuse me, we normally would have our pastor's word, um, but uh, we all know that he is recovering strong, and we continue to pray for him. Come on, somebody. We continue to pray for him. I was with him on yesterday. He sends his love. He misses all of you. Somebody just extend your arms, wrap them around yourself. That's a big hug from your pastor. Somebody tell God thank you for Dr. William D. Watley. He is recovering strong, and when he enters into this house, there will be a mighty praise from on high. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Let's please continue to pray for our pastor as he recovers to return to us. But um, we know that this pandemic has been a challenge for all of us. Um, all of us, whether in our uh, uh, particular families or at work or in the community, we all have been impacted in some way by this pandemic. And so um, we know that we were unable to honor the lives of those who we lost, who, are, who were our members or our family members, um, the way that we normally would have wanted to because of restrictions in the amount of people we could have allowed into the sanctuary. So we had to resort to different types of uh, memorial services and funerals at uh, cemeteries. Poor uh, Dr. Adams was so busy during this season trying to do all we could to reach families. And so Dr. Watley thought it not robbery that we take a moment during this service to remember the lives who are no longer with us. And so if our media team is prepared, they'll share a video of members and family and those who are associated with St. Philip 
who over the last two years have gone on to the reward in heaven. But we pause today to remember them during this memorial service. And after the video has played, we'll share a word of prayer and continue on with our worship service. Amen.
come on, let's thank God for the lives that have gone before us. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for every life that has been shared with us. We thank you, God, for their life, their legacy, their purpose, the joys, the sad days, the happy days. We thank you, God, for the memories that continue to live in our hearts for the years to come. Now, God, we ask that you will continue to keep us, help us to continue to live on purpose. Help us, oh God, to be your willing vessels in this season that your light might shine through us so that others might see your goodness and your works that we might glorify our God in heaven. This is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Although there is no formal pastor's word uh, video today, what Dr. Watley would have me share with you is uh, probably one of his um, long stories uh, over the years of great times he has shared with our guest preacher today. Um, but what uh, would be important that he would share is that over these 50 years of preaching, he has aligned himself with some friends who know Jesus and can preach Jesus like no other. He'd have me share with you that he's found a friend in the Reverend Jasper Williams, who is like a brother beloved, a preacher par excellence, who will stand before us today to break the bread of life. My question for you is, are you ready for a word? Because a word has been prepared for you. So we thank God that Dr. Watley has called upon his friend to stand in the gap today, to be the ram in the bush, to preach for us this morning. We're so grateful for the senior pastor of the Salem Baptist Church here in Atlanta, Georgia. So after we give our offering and after our prayer of intercession, that is the next voice that you will hear and we would ask that you would greet him as only we do here at St. Philip. Now, what time is it? Come on, y'all can do better than that. Dr. Watley's watching. What time is it? It's giving time. And what do we do? We give God praise. We believe in the dime, dime plan here. The first dime goes where? To God. The second dime goes where? To ourselves. And we live off the other 80%. And so we ask that you will now give our giving platforms are online. You can share now if you're in the sanctuary. We have giving receptacles at every exit that you can give in. And as we prepare to continue in this worship experience, I think the praise team is going to help us go even higher. Come on, somebody tell God thank you.
hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything, everything, everything to God in prayer. Let us pray. Merciful and loving God, we come into your presence singing your praises because you're sovereign. You are the mighty God. You are the almighty God, the everlasting God. We come before you praising your holy and righteous name, calling on the great God of the universe, the God who is the God of all comfort. We lift before you, O oh Lord, every name that's scrolling on the screen, every name, O oh gracious God, that we don't even know about, but you know because you're sovereign. You know it all. God will never leave us or forsake us. You're the God who will never go away. We thank you that you are a healing God. And we lift before you, God, all those who you're blessing right now. We thank you that you are healing right now. We thank you for what you're doing right now, that you are a keeper. You are a restorer. You are a healer. We thank you for the power that's in your name. There's no name greater. There's no name higher than the precious name of Jesus. And we lift before you our pastor, the angel of this house, and ask that you touch him right now in the name of Jesus, that you continue to strengthen him in the name of Jesus, that you reveal that you're standing right there with him in the name of Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing right now. And oh God, we lift before you our messenger this morning. We ask that you touch him anew and afresh as he comes to preach the word of God. Anoint him. Stand in him and stand with him by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Have your way. Touch somebody, oh gracious God. Deliver, set free, save. Do what you do best, and that's have your way. Surprise us with your goodness, and we'll be ever so careful to give your name and your name alone all the power uh, that comes from you, all the glory that comes from you, all the healing it comes from you. Have your way in this place. And we ask this prayer in the name of the resurrected one. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's children said amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Give God a mighty praise up in the house. Please take your seat. Thank you so very much. I need more down here. Please get me right up in here. Let me start out by saying how impressed I am with this order of worship tree on today. I have sat and I have watched from beginning to end. On my next birthday, I'll be 79 years old. And come on, give me sound right here now. If I can live to see the second Sunday in August, I shall have been preaching for 72 years. And I have never been in any worship service that I have been so moved and enjoyed as much as I have been moved in this worship service on today. To see how you have gone through the ritual of worship tree, to see how you have honored God from start to finish, and the decorum of the pulpiteers, all of you. God bless you, the choir, I've never heard no praise singing, I need to carry y'all home with me. 
and teach them how to do what you've done up in this house today. I need sound right up in here for me, please. This is me. I'm a little different. Now, the main reason I'm here is because of your pastor. Your pastor is a very, very, very close, dear, confidant friend of mine. You know, I found in living, I don't know whether you've lived long enough to find it out or not, but I found out friends don't come in bushels. You don't have a whole lot of them. Just every once in a while. Every now and then, God will send you a friend. Well, he sent this friend of mine as I moved toward the evening of my life. Now, I've never had one like your pastor. When he called me and told me about his situation, I said, well, what you need me to do? He says, well, I need you to preach for me, but I know you got your own church. I said, well, they had one. I'm coming to you. Whatever time you tell me, and if it's this time, another time, I don't care how many times, I'll be right here to do whatever I need to do. So I'm glad to be here. If you're, in, if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, put your hands together and give God a mighty praise. Amen. 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 I pondered over what I should preach about on today. I want you to turn your Bibles to the prophecy of Isaiah, if you will, chapter 53. The prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 53. And when you get it, I want you to hold it right there. I'm going to talk about Jesus, and I want to set the temple with this unique film. Going about the story of Jesus. Repeat after me. Tell me the story of Jesus. If you please, upstairs. looks that a strong armed soldier whip clenched in his fist laced with chips of bone they beat him hard from his shoulders to his feet and it sliced right through his olive skin just like razors through a sheet countless times the blood splattered as each inhuman lash was given several times his knees gave way as his flesh just hung like ribbons but surprisingly, he turned his head, though the words he used were few. The soldier's face turned pale when he said, This blood is for you. Uncaringly, they tossed a garment across his weakened form, and his blood pressure fell deathly low as the crowds began to swarm. They forced him to carry his cross up there, as his face they punched and smacked. While the splinters from the crisscross beam dug deep into his back. Through lack of sleep and dehydration, his tongue began to swell. And weakened by his loss of blood, this prophet teacher fell. When he did, some blood splattered on a man named Simon Shu. And as he bent to wipe it off, 
the prophet looked and said, Simon, this blood is for you. This blood can save the soul, heal the sick, mend the heart. This blood can give you access to the very throne of God. And it still can go the distance through the pain to where you are. This blood is for you. Bursting arteries and veins. And as they dropped the cross in the hole they dug, his body convulsed with pain. Through an agony and torment that never a soul shall find, he tilts his face towards heaven with full control of his mind. With more love than any human heard before that time or since. Statement that to this day makes the strongest skeptic wince. He cried, Father God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And as he gave his life for those lost in sin, he was saying, This blood is. about today. Jesus! 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 situation is she says whatever you're going through she Jesus your children your job your relationship she Jesus she Jesus. 
Jesus. A big hand for Jesus. Come on, put your hand together. Amen. Thank you so very much. I'm talking out of this 53rd chapter of the prophecy of Isaiah. Probably going through the entire chapter, but I'm talking under the caption of the story of Jesus is our subject for today. Ironic to find it in an Old Testament passage, but still how relevant. And I hope along the way we say something to inspire you to go further and work harder in the master's vineyard. Thank you upstairs so very much. I want to begin by saying all of the Bible is about Jesus. Anywhere you cut it, anywhere you read it, you've got to find Jesus. Whether you're reading in the Pentateuch, the historical books, the, the books of poetry and prose, the prophecies, the gospels, the epistles, you'll find Jesus standing somewhere in the shadows. Jesus is all through the Bible. Jesus is the hero of the Bible, and he is also, at the same time, Jesus saves is the message of the Bible. Martin Luther, the great reformer of the Protestant Reformation, said that this 53rd chapter of Isaiah is so precious of a chapter that it should have been written on a parchment of gold, and all of the lettering should have been studied in diamond. We have here before us in this 53rd chapter of Isaiah what I call the biography of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is but a portrait of the prophecy of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. What great proof we have in this passage about the inspiration of the Bible. Because this book was written 700 years before Jesus was ever born. But when you walk this one chapter, you get the feeling that whoever wrote it had a pad, a pen, and paper, and were walking side by side and talking side by side with Jesus. So tell me the story of Jesus. Right on my heart, every word. Tell me the story of Jesus, the sweetest and most precious that ever I heard. The story of Jesus is about his birth, it is about his life, it is about his death, and yes, it is about his resurrection. In this story of Jesus, out of this one chapter, I see four chapters that makes up the life of Jesus. Chapter one, I call it the mystery of his birth. Chapter 2, still in this chapter, I call it the manner of his life. Chapter 3 is about the meaning of his death. And then chapter 4, yes, is about the miracle of his resurrection. Walk the four chapters with me, if you please. Chapter 1, the mystery of his birth. Here it is in verse 1. It says... In verse 1 and a portion of verse 2. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And then it says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. The inference here is like that of a desert. You know that there are miles and miles of barren land. There are miles and miles of nothing but sand. And then all of a sudden you come upon a tender plant. And this tender plant is in the midst of all of this barrenness, in the midst of all of this death. He's saying that the birth of Christ is going to be like a whole world of sin. And yet, in the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, God puts his son like that of a tender plant as a root out of dry ground. This virgin birth of our Lord is not incidental. It is not accidental. It is actually fundamental because Jesus Christ had to be 
virgin born so that he could be, listen, the God man, the God man, because there was absolutely no way anybody could be saved without Jesus being the God man. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Gregor Johann Mendel, who is the father of the science of heredity and genetics, he said, and I quote, every individual is the sum total of the characteristics recessive or dominant in its immediate progenitors. That's the father of genetics and science. But believe it or not, this is saying in plain English that nothing is in you that is not in your parents. This is saying all that is in your parents is in you. Believe it or not, this helps us to understand the virgin birth of Jesus Christ because if Jesus had had Mary and Joseph as his parents, what would you have had? You would have had a human, Mary, Joseph, human, father, and then that meant the baby would have been human. See, And if he had been human, all humans had blood that was stained in sin. So that means Jesus could have never been our savior. On the other hand, if Mary had been deity, and of course God the Father is deity, you would have had God plus God would produce God. Still, that would have meant that Jesus could not have been Emmanuel. God with us. Couldn't have been that. Couldn't have been Emmanuel, God with us. He would have been God, 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 and being God only. He could not have saved us because he would have had to been among us in order to save us. But, ah, if Mary is his mother, humanity, and God is his father, deity, then you have the God-man, see. As much God as God is. As much man as man could be, could never be. All God, yes, all man, not half God, not half man. That would make him a freak. But the God-man, Never another has there been like the Lord Jesus the Christ. Oh, God, keep me today, Jesus. And so what is this that I'm talking about when we talk about the mystery of his birth? It is what theologians call the incarnation. What is that? The miracle of God becoming a man. The miracle of God becoming a man. It's the creator who created a creature like unto himself. No other way could we be saved than that of the God man. The God man. The God man. You know, I had it all wrong when I used to preach it years ago. I used to preach about how. The Holy Ghost had to have had sex with Mary and dropped the blood in Mary's womb and all of that. Hey, no. When that Holy Ghost, when you read the story, came and the angel told her, you're going to have a child. And this baby is going to be special. And she said, baby. In Luke chapter 1, verse 34, when the angel said, you're going to have a child. She knew she had not been sexing. She knew that she had not had no relationship with anybody. And when the angel told her that, the Bible says, she said, how can this be? That's the way it says, she said. But I just pitch in my mind, here the angel is telling her, you, you're going to have a son. And she knew she had had nothing to do with Joseph. And so she responds out of awe, out of being surprised. She said, how can this be? How can this be? You're telling me I'm going to have a baby? 
how can this be? Well, God keep me today, Jesus. And so, Thomas Aquinas explains it, I think, better than anybody when he said it was as a ray of sun. A ray of sun that had entered the womb of Mary. Because that next verse, verse 35 of Luke chapter 1, the B clause says, the angel told Mary and it says, the Holy Ghost shall come up on thee and the power of the Most High will overshadow thee. No sexing. No stuff like what we talk about. Just the Holy Ghost. Overshadowing thee. Oh God, keep me today, Jesus. Anybody here other than me just would like to have the Holy Ghost to just shh, overshadow you. Overshadow you. And so every time I think about this mysterious birth of Jesus, it staggers my imagination. Think about how God could get himself reduced into one single cell and wrap himself around the womb of a 15-year-old teenage girl. It staggers my imagination. The mystery of his birth. Repeat that to me if you don't mind. The mystery of his birth. Chapter 2, still in this same chapter here now, is what I call the manner of his life. Don't miss this. The manner of his life. Commencing at verse 2 where we left off, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. Watch now, here's the manner of his life. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid it, as it were, our faces. From him he was despised, and we esteemed him not. That's the manner of his life. This is not saying that Jesus was ugly. This is not saying that Jesus was hideous or unattractive in any form nor fashion. No, it's not. It's not saying any of this. No, no. It amazes me that out of all 66 books of the Bible, nowhere in, in all the Bible does it say anything about how Jesus looked. Nowhere. Genesis to Revelation, nowhere does it talk about his appearance. It says nothing about he was ugly or unattractive. It says nothing about how handsome he was. It says nothing about his wit. Nothing about his charm. Nothing about his physical physique. Nothing at all. About that does it say anything at all? So far as the Bible is concerned, Jesus was nondescript in that way. And I say that because you remember when Judas went to strike the deal that I'm going to give you 30 pieces, take 30 pieces of silver. You pay me and I'll turn him over. First thing the mob crowd asked him was how will we know him? Not because he's going to be six feet, two inches tall, or look like this or look like that. Uh, you know it because he'll be the one I kiss. That's the way you'll know him. I'll kiss him. I'll kiss him. I will kiss him. You know, I don't know. I'm sure you've seen pictures, you know, with Jesus. I've gone into churches where they got Jesus on these pictures and 
they, they got this lily white, uh, blue eyed Jesus, you know, with a halo wrapped all around his head. You know what, you know what I mean? And, and his, his feet are arched and his hands are turned, giving him a kind of feminine look. Oh no. Jesus was nothing queer about him at all. Jesus was a real man. That's what he was. He was a real man. How do I know? He could spend all night long on the mountainside praying. He spent a whole 40 days in the wilderness by himself as a man praying, praying, surrounded by wild and ferocious beasts in prayer, surrounded by the roaring lion, the growling bear, the squealing panther. Jesus was a real man. He was a real man. It reminds me of that tabernacle in the Old Testament. You remember that building that the children of Israel would move every time they went to another segment of the wilderness? They would move that tabernacle. You remember? That's the way Jesus was. In fact, about it in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 14, it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. But the original language says, The Word was made flesh and tabernacled among us. He was like that tabernacle, common, ordinary, nondescript. See, Jesus was that. Nondescript. But had you gotten on the inside of that tabernacle, you would have seen the kind of labors glittering and shining. Had you seen the embroidery in that tabernacle, the scarlet, the purple, the crimson, the white. Had you seen the gold glittering with all of its beauty, you would have marveled, oh, what a beautiful building this is. And so is it with Jesus. If you don't know him, if you don't understand him, if you've never had a relationship with him, you can't understand it. But when you get on the inside of him and look at him with an eye of faith, you'll have to marvel, oh, what beauty is the king. How glorious. How marvelous, how victorious is our king. The manner of his life. That brings me now to where you are in your life, to where you are right here, right now. All of us are right here. The meaning of his death. What does his death do? To and for me, how does Jesus' death bless me in 2022? Let me tell you how. You're going to grasp the understanding of all of this about Jesus. You've got to understand what happens with his death. And know this about his death, that his death is inextricably tied to his birth. All of us who are born on planet Earth, God gave us a purpose. You may not be fulfilling your purpose, but each of us have a purpose. Jesus had a purpose, and Jesus' purposes, purpose was to die. Born to die. He had to die. Why? Because of Christmas. Christmas and Easter are tied together because of his blood. Christmas. Christ masked is Christmas. Christ masked himself in human flesh. And in that mass scene see, came his pure blood that was not spilled when you spill something, you accident. But his blood was shed. 
meaning he intended to do it. Shed that blood on that cross, meaning he's loved at the same time, and he didn't want to see any of us die and go to hell. And so in order to stop that, he, God, had to become our substitute. He had to take our place. I would have choked him enough if he just had to take my place. But just think about all of the world's place. What well, does this, this 53rd chapter, does it say anything about that? Yes. It talks about how he took our place. Yes. Meaning that Jesus had to be both the just and the justifier at the same time. Meaning Jesus had to take for you what you would have had to take for you if you do not take Jesus. I said you will have to take what Jesus took if you do not take Jesus. Yes. In other words, you either be pardoning Christ or you'll be punishing hell. Either or. Watch this text now. I see in these next two verses, he took for us three things. And this is where your life is. He took your sins. He took your shame. He took your separation. Here it is, verses five and six. Please pay attention. Verse five. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. All of this gives us the total being of who we are. We are body, soul, and spirit. And all three of them are right here. Now whenever we talk about this, we always say among ourselves, body, soul, and spirit in that order. But whenever you see it placed in the Bible, it is always spirit, soul, and body. And that's the way it is right here in this verse before us right now. Look at verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. That's your spirit. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. That's your soul. And with his stripes we are healed. That's your body. Watch it now. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Those transgressions are our sins. Bruised for our iniquities. Those iniquities are our sins. See, when you say uh, transgressions, you're talking about that stuff that violates the laws of God. When you say iniquities, you're talking about those sins that you commit and you do them over and over again and again and again, and you can't get a grip on it to stop it, those are sins that get into your bloodstream and are handed down to all coming generations. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, talks about handed down to the sixth and seventh generation in your bloodstream. That's what he's really, really saying here. In your bloodstream, it passes down. Transgressions and iniquities are man's spirit. Every sin we commit, whether it be a transgression or it be an iniquity, we need to be forgiven for. Christ took our sins. Look, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. There's anything I want in life more than anything else is just to have peace of mind. Peace of mind. Anybody here got trouble with your children, your grandchildren, you think they're getting along all right, you've gotten over to them and they turn around and do something else crazy. Just, just want a peace, a peace of mind. That deals with your soul. It's talking about your psyche. Your soul is your intellect, your emotions, 
talking about your feelings. It's another word for a person's will. It's what he's really saying. We have a right to believe God, to take away the worry, to take away the fear, to remove the depression, to take away the confusion, or anything that destroys our peace of mind. Then he says, and with his stripes, we are healed. This means that we also have a right to believe God for physical healing. That death on the cross of Christ puts us candidates for being spiritually healed by him as he sees fit. Just like we believe him to take our sins on that cross to forgive us. He also took our sickness to heal us. By his stripes, we are healed. But not only did he take our sin, here's where most of you are right here. He took our shame. I know he did mine. That is verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to a slaughter. As a sheep before her sharers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. It is here that we see Christ taking our shame. He took our shame. When I say he took our shame, I mean he took those things that make you feel dirty, nasty, filthy. Those things that make you feel unworthy. He took all of that. Those things that makes us feel like we're naked, like we are exposed. This is nothing but a foreshadowing of the Garden of Eden. Oh, you remember when God told Adam and Eve, don't you eat of the forbidden fruit? Just like you and I, time he tell you not to do something, that's what you do. Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit, you know. And when they ate, God got mad and came down in the cool of the evening, walking with footsteps that sounded like the clap of rolling thunder. He called Adam, Adam, where art thou? And you know where they were when he found them? They were hiding, taking leaves off the trees, hiding, covering up their nakedness because they were shamed of that nakedness. This is where clothes came into existence. See? Because they didn't end up, God didn't let them wear no, no, no leaves. God allowed them to put on the skins of the animals they had brought to sacrifice. In other words, they put on the skins of those animals which is nothing but a symbol of Jesus Christ who is the ultimate sacrificer. So they, they talking about designing clothes. This is where uh, Coco Chanel and uh, Versace, you know, and, 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 and uh, Louis Vuitton and Gucci and Mark Jacob. This is where all of them got their style. Because Christ was crucified naked on that cross. No one came to cover up his shame, but he took your shame, my shame, shame of the whole human race and tapped it, nailed it to the cross. So what are you going to do about it today? You walking around feeling shame? That shame you're feeling bad about, Jesus already taken it. All you got to do is take Jesus. That's all. That's all. God knows if he didn't take my shame, I couldn't stand here and preach. I'm through. I got shame that lasts however many lifetimes. But because he took my shame, I can stand here and preach what God said the Lord. I'm almost through. Not only did he take your sin, 
Not only did he take your shame, but he also took your separation. Oh God, Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your word. That is, verse 8, he was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare this generation, for he was cut off, cut off that separation out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Jesus was cut off from God. Now, how was that? He was cut off from God, separated from God. He was separated by God because God is the God of all of us. He's the God of when you're right. He's your God when you're wrong. He's the God of the sinner and the saint. He's the God of the roach, the skunk, the rat, the cat. He's the God of all, but he's only the father of those who receive him, who believe in him. And so Jesus could call him father all while he was here in the world. You remember when he was 12 years old? and went into the temple and confounded the doctors and lawyers, Jesus told them, I must be about my father's business. On another occasion, he said, my father and I are one. And on another time, he said, he that has seen me has seen the father. In the garden of Gethsemane, you know what he said? Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, let that will be. But on that cross, on that cross, he did not take the place of a sinner. Christ became sin. And when God being holy looked at sin, and that's where his son was, he couldn't address him as father because he turned his back on him. That's when he sighed and cried. Eloi, Eloi, lay my sabbath and now. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because he was in a sinner's place. I'm out of here now. Verse 11, he, talking about the father, shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied Listen to the verse really. He, what he, the father, shall see the travail. What is travail? The sorrow. The sorrow of what? Of his soul. Whose soul? The son shall be satisfied. That means when Jesus died on that cross, he did something for man and he did something for God. Well, what did he do for man? Just as if I justified, just as if I never sinned at all. That's what he did for me. Well, what did he do for God? God became satisfied because all other time God been taking lambs, rams, heifers, bullocks, and doves, and the sin debt still wasn't paid. They had to come back the next year and do it all over again. <laughs> but no, God became satisfied because the God man had paid the debt in full. So Jesus paid it all. Sin paid in full. Shame paid in full. Pain paid in full. Separation paid in full. Past mistakes paid in full. My rejection paid in full. I've had loneliness paid in full. Slave to sin paid in full. Spiritual death paid in full. Well, how much do I owe? Amount due. Zero, zero, zero. How much?
much change do I get back? Zero, zero, zero. What is the subtotal? Zero, zero, zero. What is the grand total? Zero, zero, zero. Cause Jesus, hey, 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 he paid it all. Can I get a witness up in here? Ah, Jesus. God bless your heart today. Jesus, all our sin grieves here by everything to God in prayer. Were you there when they crucified? Were you? virtual world sometimes it causes me to tremble 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 were you Sanctified, my Lord. This is your answer in the virtual world. At the cross, Dr. Wiley, you've been telling them all these years. At the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received. And now I am a happy all the day. The door of the Lord's house is open. Your sin been taken, your shame, your separation. Come to Christ. Do me a favor, if you will. Hallelujah. Will you take your seat? Thank you so much. Let me tell you what I want you to do. I want you to help me show myself to be your pastor's friend. There's no time that anybody needs you more than any other time than when you're down. You sweet people have been remarkable people. He has told me innumerable times 
What a great church. What a great spirit you are. I want to lift an offering for Dr. Wadley. I want him to know how I feel about him as a friend. You know how Wadley is. He's going to try to pay me coming over here. He can't pay me. You are too sweet of a congregation. I preach for you, period, for nothing. I don't need no money not to preach to a great congregation like this. I want to give him a special offering today. Whatever he had planned to give me, I want him, I know he's probably looking, but know this, if you're watching in the virtual world, I don't want none of your money, Pastor. I just want you to keep being my friend. That's all I want. No money for me. And I'm going to start this offering off myself with $5,000 from me, not my church, from me, from a friend to another friend. And I'm going to ask you today, one thing I know Dr. Wadley is and has been a faithful pastor. I saw him teach his teachings in you today. When you say, here's my tithe, the first dime goes to God. That's Bible. The second dime comes to myself. That's Bible. I'll live out the remaining 80. That's Bible. No wonder you're so blessed as a people. No wonder you take time to honor people who are gone because of COVID. Would you help me? Would you please help me say to a friend, I'm your friend. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart, no particular amount, if you don't have any money, that's all right. That's all right. You come down and around just like you put in $10,000. It's all right. But if you would help me today to show our preacher, our pastor, our beloved, we love you. I would appreciate that. Now, I don't know how the decorum goes. I don't know how you march. But I know how to pay my 5000 and sit down. I know how to do that. Are you all all right with that? Yeah. Will you help me? Yeah. Come right on, Dr. Gibson. Would you handle this part for us, please? Okay, thank you. If you will, um, we have our ushers are prepared with extra envelopes. If you need an envelope, if you might raise your hand now, they'll make sure you get one. And if you would, just notate on that envelope. I think Ms. Venus would appreciate just Dr. Watley's name. If you would just put Dr. Watley on your envelope, um, uh, our finance department would appreciate that. If you're giving online, if you're giving at any one of our platforms, we have Givelify, Text to Give, PayPal, Cash App. Our Cash App is SPC240ATL. Come on, y'all. Y'all know that. SPC240ATL. Put in the four section, the memo section, Dr. William D. Watley. We'll make sure that he gets every single dime. If you will please do that as we honor the man of God that leads us, I think that he would be more than appreciated. I think it's safe to say this will serve as I sow a seed today. This will serve as I sow a seed today. So if you just normal and used to hitting sow a seed, hit that sow a seed today. If I get in trouble for it later, that'll be all right. But uh, we're, we're going to let this serve as the source seed on today, following the leadership of our guest preacher. Amen. Amen. We thank God for this preach word. Would you put your hands together for the man of God who has come and poured out onto us? We thank God for his life, his ministry, 
and for his friendship to our pastor. Amen. We thank you, um, Dr. Williams, for being here today. Um, we're almost ready to go. I do want to remind you that immediately after this service, we will have our baptism service. So um, after the singing of our postlude, uh, we will give directions for that and for persons how they will be able to exit if you are here in the sanctuary. Those who have given, let's go ahead and pray. Gracious God, we thank you for every gift that's been sown in this space. We thank you, God, for the giver and the heart in which they're giving. We ask God that you will use it for your servant, that God, you will allow it to be a blessing to his life, his ministry, and his restoration. Use it for your kingdom glory. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, those who may have been watching virtually, if you would like to join the church, we did extend the invitation. You can always email us at info at stphilip.org and our virtual pastor will reach out to you immediately. Amen. I think we're ready to go. I think we're ready to go. Praise God from whom not some, but all blessings flow. front of you like a shepherd leading his flock may he stand under you when you think you're falling you realize he's there may God be behind you to protect you from stabbers in your back may he be over you to shine every once in a while let you know he is still there go knowing that God is going with you Repeat after me, I am going, knowing God is going with me. Amen, 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 all together now, amen, 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 everybody, let me hear Amen, for the Father. Please be seated for our postlude. 